to worship you, God. Oh, and we've come to bow down before you, and we seek only your face, Jesus, and we lay you down again. Oh, how lovely. Sing, oh, how lovely is a king in all his glory, is a Christ who
all honor to your name. We give honor to your name. The name that's so much greater than all names. Be lifted
lift his name up. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher, God. Be lifted up, Lord. Be lifted higher. One more time, be lifted up. Yeah. Be lifted up. Lifted higher, oh my King, be lifted up, Lord, be lifted higher. I sing praises to your name, praises to your name. Name that's so much higher than all names. Lord, we lift you up. We lift you up, God. We lift up the name of Jesus. That his name every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess. That he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And we lift your name up, Lord. Because there's no other name under heaven and earth that man might be saved. There's no other name in which a person is healed in. There's no other name. And we bless you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you thanks. And we thank you. That your name rests upon those who know you. Those who have made you Lord of their life. So it's in your name we ask all these things tonight. It's in your name we desire. It's in your name. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher. Be lifted up, Lord. Be lifted higher. Thank you, Lord. Give him praise. Give him praise. Well, y'all can have a seat. Most of you know our beloved friend whose family here, Joni. So we're just going to turn her loose and turn loose what the Lord is, wants to speak through her and do through her. And we'll take a break in the midst of it and we'll be taking up a love offering because she comes with, she just comes and says whatever you guys can give. And so we want to bless her tonight. So I just want to let you know that. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome in the name of Jesus, Joni Ames. Good to be here tonight. Um, it was just one of those things that happened. <laughs> I didn't have a schedule at all, and all of a sudden, um, the Lord just began to open some things up. Excuse me while I get some of my notes out here. So aren't you excited about it being a new year? I don't know about you, but I am so glad last year is over with. <laughs> yeah, I had enough of last year. I don't know about you, but it just seemed like uh, anything that could happen would happen. And one thing I did learn is you don't ever ask oh my gosh, what's next, or oh my gosh, what else is going to go wrong, um, because it was just one of those years, and on top of that, you know, the whole thing that happened with the election and, and everything else, and, but I went through so much last year, just a few of the things were that my daughter and her husband and kids and my dad all had a flood in West Virginia, and they lost everything. Um, my son had a fall and got two fractured vertebrae. I ended up getting sick and went in the hospital for about a week and then was home for three months. And, um, you know, I moved again across country and everything else. So it was just really kind of wild. And I don't know about you, but have you ever had Job's comforters? <laughs> you know, like if something's wrong with them, 
they're under attack, but if something's wrong with you, what door have you left open? <laughs> Just saying, you know, and, and they try to claim that, you know, you're, you must be doing something wrong in order for all of these things to happen. So just a lot of lessons in my life this year and lessons even that God taught me about not judging other people when they go through things because, you know, we might be judged as well. So anyhow, this is a brand new year, and I'm very thankful for it. And I really believe that it's a year when we're going to see our nation literally declare Jesus Christ as Lord over our nation. That's what the Lord told me. And uh, he has begun to put godly people in place all across our nation. In fact, um, just before I got here, I read that Alabama Supreme Court has actually declared that a baby is a real life at conception. And uh, you know, I'm just really excited about all that God is doing. And, you know, when you, you hunger and thirst after God and his righteousness, he shows up. And, and again, like I said, you know, I believe that Jesus is going to be declared Lord publicly by many of our nation's leaders this year. One of the things that the Lord spoke to me is, and I'm sure many of you know about these movies, the movie of this title, but I said to the Lord, so what about 2017? And he said, this is the year the empire strikes back. <laughs> And he, he met God's empire, you know, and uh, I really believe that it's the church's finest hour and that we're going to see things happen that we've waited for for a long time. Now, let me tell you, all, with all that's gone on, with all that's gone wrong, I believe the Lord is declaring over our nation that it's a time to end anger, bitterness, division, and strife. And so that's kind of a choice that we have to make, too, because with all of what we've, we've gone through, like I said, even with the election time period and everything else, there's been a lot of strife, division, and anger stirred up. And so sometimes we just have to zip our lip, you know, and make us be the one to choose first to begin to be the person of peace that makes that happen and to speak words of love instead of words of anger, instead of words of strife, and instead of words of division. And the Lord spoke to me and he said that not to, to get off of the wall of intercession in this time, that we need to stay on the wall. You know, just like in the Old Testament when they were rebuilding the wall, what did they do? But they had a weapon in one hand while they worked with the other, and that that's what we need to be doing. And we need to continue to be watchmen and watchwomen that he has raised up for such a time as this. You know, I really believe that as we have seen God move in this nation and as we continue to pray that we're going to see some big time things occur here. I believe that there is an awesome move of God that's about to occur here in the United States. God even showed me some time back that we were going to even see tent revivals like the days of old, like uh, when Oral Roberts was going out, and that we're going to see many healings and so forth. But in the process of it, we've got to be more grown up, you know, as a church than what we've been. And he said, one of the things that we need to do is to follow the cloud. And that doesn't mean necessarily move somewhere, okay? But the way that he spoke it to me is, we've got to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. And he said, don't expect a road map. Don't expect him to have some kind of personalized invitation for you uh, or detailed directions when he's already given you his word. And he's already spoken to you what's about to happen when he's already given you prophetic words and so forth but we have his gps he, he spoke it to me and he said it's his guided and positioned by the spirit gps <laughs> and when we pay attention to what the holy spirit is saying you know uh, follow what the spirit is saying to the church follow what the spirit is saying to your heart we can't go wrong and he promises that a righteous person's steps are ordered by the lord but part of what happens is that when we get under attack, when things happen in our life, and listen, there's a lot of distractions out there, a lot of stuff, just like I told you about the stuff that happened this year with me. And there's a lot of distractions that can try to get us to doubt that we're even hearing God. But that's when we need to take the time aside and we need to focus on him. Just focus on him, focus on his word, pay attention to whether what you're hearing is from the word or if, if it's contrary to it, then obviously it's not from the Lord. But here's what he said. 
that there are many that are going to get marching orders this year. And, but there are also many that are going to get stay put orders. And listen, when he says stay put, you better stay put. Because if you go jumping out and doing something before time, or just because you're bored, or just because you had a vision about something, and it's not God's timing, you're going to be in big trouble. I remember one time when Rick Joyner gave me a word like that, and he said that I was going to eventually join up with a, a big ship, but that I was getting uh, really, um, I don't know, antsy about it or whatever, and that if I got out there before that time to join came together, that I'd drown. You know, and he didn't mean literally drown. Uh, he said that I needed to have patience and wait for God, wait for his timing, because what he saw was that God had put me on a slow barge and that as I went along the way, that everything I had need of was being put on that barge so that when I joined up with whatever that big ship is, that I would have everything that I had need of. But if I decided to get in a speedboat instead, it would just be me there, and I wouldn't have the things that I had need of. And so we need to pay attention to timing in the Lord. You know, timing is everything. Timing is everything. And I remember Paul Cain saying to me one time, to be very cautious because just because I would fall in love with a place or a group of people didn't mean I was supposed to move there. Listen, I did that one time, and, and it was disaster. Actually, I've done it twice now. But um, just because that happens doesn't mean you're supposed to move there because God always gives you a heart for those he's going to have you minister to. That does not mean you're supposed to move there. In fact, if you move there, you're probably going to lose your authority. That's what happened with me both times that I did that. Because you're just like Jesus was without authority or without honor in his own town. And so a lot of times he has us, you know, go someplace and, and hit the mark and come back rather than to be someplace. Because when you are in place, um, you know, once you get there, then people lose respect for you because they know you. And they'd be just like with Jesus. Ah, I know him. He's, he's from my hometown. And so be very cautious of just up and going somewhere that you shouldn't go. By the same token, be very cautious of not listening to the Lord if he tells you to go. So what the Lord said is it's all a matter of relationship, relationship with him, to really press into relationship with him because his sheep know his voice. And the more close we are to him, the more that we'll know and recognize his voice. And that instant obedience in this time period will equal instant blessings. And we'll be able to get done what we're supposed to do. Uh, and, and if we aren't mindful of these things, it'll be just like Esther was told. Esther was told, who knows whether you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. But if you choose not to do this, you and your father's house will perish and we'll find somebody else. <laughs> God can find somebody else to do what he's telling you to do. Uh, but, you know, why should we do that? I watched my mother die never having fulfilled her purpose, call, and destiny. And, you know, people, when I say that, they say, oh, but you can and I'm like, yeah, but she could have. <laughs> do you want to die without fulfilling your purpose and let, let your, one of your relatives fulfill it? Or do you want to fulfill it yourself? The good news is we don't have to pass through this earth without fulfilling our purpose, call, and destiny. We can do it. But a lot of times we have to really press through. It's a battle. It's warfare. I'm telling you, I've had more warfare over trying to accomplish. There's two things that for years now I've been trying to accomplish. The one is to finish uh, my doctorate. And I have had extreme warfare in that. And it's not that I want a title because I'm not a title kind of a person. But once I have that, I'm going to be able to either help to head up a school of ministry or even begin one myself. And so that's very important to me, especially I'm 62 years old now. I don't want to always travel forever on the road. And the second thing um, is that you know, I have been working on a prophetic manual for, I would say, 22 years <laughs> because it started out as an outline years ago, and it just keeps developing. And someone told me, well, maybe you're supposed to do a part here and a part there. I know the vision God gave me. It's supposed to be a complete manual on the prophetic so that it can be used in churches. It can be used in schools of ministry. It can be used in home groups. And, you know, God has really been helping me, but it's really been hard to get through that. And there, like I said, there's been so many distractions. In fact, just to give you a little uh, hint at some of what I'm doing, the first part of it is the basics. It's a foundation and so forth. And so that as you go into the rest of it, 
um, then you're aware of, of what you need to get into it, like be rooted and grounded in the word, the difference between the true prophetic and divination and so forth and so on. And then it goes on into how the prophetic operates in all five of the offices, apostle, pastor, evangelist, um, I'm sorry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And then the Lord had me do it in each of the areas of gifting because the prophetic isn't something that is just for one area of gifting. You know, in the area of healing, the prophetic operates. God will give you words of knowledge about where somebody has a pain and where he's healing them and that kind of thing. And then uh, the, the most recent thing is that there's another segment that he's giving to me about the prophetic in the seven mountains. And so I'm, I'm really excited about it, and it's got to get done. And I just it's just something that the Lord has told me. This is something that you have to press into. You've got to do. You've got to force yourself to do it, even when you don't feel like it. And so, so that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Just pray that, that I will. And, and then you don't give up. You know, and I believe I've told you this part before. The Lord told me years ago, if you ever let anything start stopping you, it'll never stop stopping you until you decide <laughs> to make it stop stopping you. And so you've got to sometimes press through some things and not quit, even when the road is very rough. And tenacity pays off. You know, when we continue to press on through and we reject even rejection. And let me tell you what, when I was going through a time in my life where rejection really had a hold of me, I will never forget how God actually delivered me of that. And it's not that it doesn't try to come back, because sometimes it does. But I can remember going, rejection? Well, I, I'll just reject rejection. And out loud, I just spoke out. I said, rejection, I reject you in Jesus' name. And I literally felt something go, like jump right off of me. And I, I could feel um, just as if the enemy was there, like a, you know, a demon just going, ah, scared, because I was rejecting rejection. Like, how dare you reject me, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, I can reject rejection. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and um, use his own weapon on him. But you've got to watch your mouth, because... A lot of times, even the words you say bring curses on you and bring rejection on you uh, when it's not even there. And it's not just a matter of ignoring the distractions, like I said, but it's a matter of paying attention to the words that we say. Uh, our murmuring and complaining, you know, just like with the Israelites, it can cause us to miss out on the promised land. So anyway, this year um, is 5777 on the Jewish calendar. It's 2017 on ours. The number... Seven is a number of divine order, perfection, and I'm, I'm sorry, perfection and completion. The number 17 is a number for divine order. And so on the Jewish calendar, it's Ayin Zayin. And Zayin uh, is, is a sword or a peg, a tent peg, that has a crown on the top of it. Like, like this is a tent peg with a crown on the top of it. So that whatever we have grabbed a hold of, laid a hold of, and, and put our stake in the ground for. Now God's crowning it with his glory. And it's also a time, you know, as I'm sure you've heard many say, of clashing of the swords, because uh, it, it also represents a sword. But our sword, our greatest sword, is the word of God. And it's that two-edged sword that when we use it, it's the word and the spirit and it accomplishes much. You know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And I found out, after all these years, I didn't know it, but after all these years, I found out that that term two-edged sword uh, is a compound of two words, the first one being di, D-I, and it means two, and the second one being stamos, which means mouth. And that literally what it means and refers to as the word of God is it's in in reference to both the written word of God as well as the prophetic spoken word of God is the word of God coming from God's mouth, through his mouth, into us and out of our mouth. And therein is the power. So that as we speak his, his word or his prophetic word, it's that two-edged sword that cuts off the plans of the enemy. And so that's why it's so powerful even when we speak prophetically over other people. Because it, it's the word of God. It's God's mouth. And speaking of that, you know, I believe that, and, and I'm, this isn't a political statement. Let me say that in advance, okay? 
but it's a prophetic sign even uh, of, of Trump being there and being in office because the Lord said it's time to sound the trumpet in Zion and it's time for us to use our trumpet, our mouth. And he gave me this verse uh, for us and it's Isaiah 42, 14. I've held my peace a long time. I've been still and restrained myself. Now I will cry like a woman in labor. I will pant and gasp at once. And God said it's time to open our mouth. It's time to sound our trumpet. And that there's great increase in the levels of anointing that he's even putting on people who are willing to step out there and do that. Let me tell you what, it'll cost you. It will cost you. It costs to, to go and preach the word. It costs to pastor a church like this. If you think it's all fun and games, why don't you just try spending a week in somebody else's shoes? <laughs> or let's try a month. It, it costs dearly, but it's worth it. You know, it just reminds me of that song, it's going to be worth it. But this year, I believe, is a year of God's favor and his victory, and favor unlike we've ever seen before, and even redemption, Joel 2.25, where he's going to restore even the years the locust and canker worm has, has eaten. And one of the things that the Lord spoke to me is that even held-up blessings are being released in this season. If there are things you've been believing God for, prophetic words that have not yet come to pass, you know what? Grab a hold of those things and dust them off and begin to proclaim and declare. Use your trumpet. Proclaim and declare life over those things because this is the year they will come to pass. And I, I also felt like that the Lord said this. It's, the, it's the, the year for the baby boomers to come forth. The 50 and over. And uh, he gave me... Uh, a message years ago about the movie Space Cowboys where there were these astronauts, you know, and they were old guys. They were really old guys. <laughs> and they had gone up and they had made this space station. But what happened is it was this day and time now and something happened with it and it had to be fixed. But they didn't have time to train these young guys how to do it. So they went where they had gone before and took the younger generation with them to train them as they went. And I believe that's the season we're in for the 50 and over, that we're going to go where we've gone before as well as to new places, but we're going to take the younger generation with us. And even John Glenn, you know, and he just recently passed away, was a prophetic sign of that. And, again, not to try to make a political statement, but the fact that Donald Trump, he's going to be the oldest person to ever take on the presidency as they go into office. And I believe these two things are prophetic signs to us uh, if we'll just pay attention to it, that God is saying he's not through with the older generation. There's been so much said about the younger ones, and I've just kind of been one of those that's adamant, like, you know, I'm not going to pass on my baton to anybody till I'm done. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead, I'll lay hands on, I'll train, I'll do whatever with the younger generation, but I'm not done either. And listen, the younger generation, we need their exuberance, but the younger generation needs our maturity. And we've seen that even out there recently, again, through the elections with some of them getting so crazy and, and everything. But let me tell you what, th those kids were indoctrinated. I was told this by a couple of millennials who had experienced people coming onto campus, and they literally told these kids that they knew that if Trump was put in office, that America was going to be hit with an atomic bomb and totally destroyed. That's why they were so totally freaked out when he got into office and who they voted for did not. They've been lied to. And the Lord said, it's time to take back the children on our campuses. And it's time to watch out where you send your kids if your kids are going to go to college and not let them go someplace where they're going to be indoctrinated by, by something that's a false doctrine. And again, I'm not speaking this in a political way, but lies, whether they're political lies or whether their religious lies are lies, <laughs> and they can wreak havoc. And so it's time for us to even go into the campuses and, and take our young people back, for the older generation to help to raise up and anoint this next generation, and to stop word cursing them. Quit saying this is a generation of entitlement. And you know what? Entitle them to the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Let it be a generation of entitlement to the blood of Jesus. And, and, and again, stop word cursing them with all the rest of what's being said. 
and just remember, love is God's greatest weapon. And not to go in there to try to change their political agendas or anything else, but to go in there and give them the word of God. That in itself will do what it's supposed to do and cause them to make right decisions. And, you know, how many of you have, have seen that yourself or experienced that yourself, even with some of your own family members? I know I have, even with some of my pastor friends who have kids who have gone on to the campuses and, and been through that. And another thing is, is we're seeing a lot of, I don't know what you would say, the greats pass on, whether it's ministry or whether it's even in the entertainment field. Look at how many have passed on. But the Lord said, death is swallowed up in victory. And in this, that there are many mantles being passed on to the next generations. And we're to grab them and run with them. You know, I remember when I went to Bob Jones's funeral, and people were filing past his casket. All of a sudden, I'd see, like, in the spirit realm, I would see a little sticky note, a 3M sticky note on their mouth, on their shoulder, on their ears, um, on their nose, on their eyes, uh, you know, just different places. And I was like, does anybody else see this, you know? And, um, and I said, Lord, what is that? And he says, those are pieces of Bob's mantle that they obtained while they sat under his ministry. And they can now carry on that work. Listen, it's no more, you know, just stars in the kingdom. God, this time period that we're in right now, God is opening up the opportunity for the body of Christ as a whole to do his work. And uh, Bishop Bill Hammond actually uh, wrote a book about it, The Day of the Saints Movement. And he wrote that about 10 years or so ago. But that's the time period we're in. It's a time period where we can all... Like John Wimber used to say, do the stuff, <laughs> do the good stuff. And it's time to do the good stuff. And as your faith is, so be it unto you. You either believe it or you sit still and don't do a thing and be bored. And I said years ago they called the seats that you sit in in church pews, and that's because it stinks to just sit there. <laughs> Get it like, ew. <laughs> but another thing is don't be so grievous over these people that have gone on uh, because grief – will also steal your blessings. And, you know, there's an amount of grief that we can have, but then there's a time when we have to say no to grief. Like, let's end this, and let's go on with what we're called to do. And make the passing of those lives, make their lives be worthwhile as they pass by carrying on what they gave to you. You know, Bob Jones and Rick Joyner and Paul Kane and many of the others said to those of us that they helped to raise up let our ceiling be your floor. In other words, start where we're leaving off. Isn't that awesome? I mean, if you see where they've left off, oh, my word, like Bob Jones. Um, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to start where he left off. So let that happen. And, and again, don't let fear come in and try to stop you from speaking things out or from doing what it is that you're called to do. And as you do it, you know, God's not looking for people who are professional, just available, all right? I remember one time when um, I was invited to help to train intercessors for Peter Wagner's ministry at a conference outside of Washington, D.C., and I was real excited about it, but I was a little bit fearful, and like, why would they invite me? And I went there, and when I went there, they were all talking about their PhDs and their ordinations and everything, and I hadn't had any of that. I mean, I don't know what God was thinking. Why well, put me out there when I hadn't been ordained or didn't have any school of ministry stuff or anything? So I was like pulling aside, and I was like, oh, Jesus, you know, let me huddle with you. Put your arm around me. <laughs> Hide me from them. Don't let them ask me what my um, scholastic standing is in, in regard to theology and everything. And don't let them ask me where I'm ordained. Oh, I feel so out of place. I don't have any of that. And he said, I know, me too. <laughs> and I was like, oh, gosh, that's right, you know. <laughs> but I've always been one of his disciples, like, oh, duh. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes we think that we have to do so much. And, and there's nothing against any of that. You know, like I said, I'm going for my doctorate this year. Uh, and I believe that you know, knowledge is a wonderful thing. And, and I want to have as much of it as I can. But the main thing is the anointing. And what does that cost you? It, it'll cost you everything. What it means is spending time with the Lord. 
and as we press into him and we spend time with him, and just like Mike Bickle told me one time, any worthwhile ministry we do is a direct result of our own personal relationship and walk with the Lord. And so continue to press in. You know, when my mother died, I went through her death and a divorce at the same time, lost everything I owned, was buying a house, lost a vehicle, ended up in the worst housing project in the city I was living. I mean, I had been the girl that was raised in Beverly Hills, California, okay? So that was like pretty drastic. But I just cried out to the Lord, and I was face down on the floor every night, put my kids to bed. I was worshiping God. I was reading the word. I mean, hours and hours on end to the, to the middle of the night in the wee small hours of the morning. And it's not like anything drastic happened at the time. You know, it took years before God opened up ministry to me. But I would not have survived if I hadn't have pressed into the Lord like I did. And there wasn't anything like, you know, putting on a headset or anything else. We had record players, which are, were just honking huge CDs. <laughs> and we had these big stereo speakers. And so I would lay on the floor and put those speakers on both sides of my head as I'm face down on the floor playing those records about the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Because the voice of the enemy was really loud and trying to take me out. And because I had a prophetic anointing on me the enemy was coming at me with all kinds of things uh, witchcraft I mean I I don't know who it was or where they were coming from but I had witchcraft coming at me so bad that when I would go to bed at night next thing you know it would be like a hand was coming up out of a grave and grabbing a hold of my arm and I mean serious stuff that was going on and but I fought through it and sometimes that's what it takes we've got to be determined to fight through it and and to get the gold <laughs> with Jesus. And I believe that God is bringing forth a generation now. God is bringing forth a church, not just a generation, but God is bringing forth a church that won't quit. But, you know, a lot of people in the places where I've been at got kind of worn out. Uh, we had conference after conference at Morningstar and other places, and everybody was always there. Every time the doors were open and everything, we got worn out. And so we had to take a little bit of a break. But you know what? It's time to get back in. It's time to get back in and swim and do what we're supposed to do. And the Lord said, this year expect the unexpected. Don't let it discourage you or stop you, but expect the unexpected. But good things too, not just bad things. And stuff is being planned by the enemy. But again, we can't be diverted by the stuff from the enemy. You know, but there's a, a big disturbance that he's trying to create even now. And we need to pray, pray, pray that in these last few days of the current administration that what they're trying to do to divide Israel does not happen, people. Because the word of God says the nation that divides Israel will they themselves be divided. And the prophetic word through many of the prophets is saying that if we as a nation divide, help to divide Israel, we will be divided and this is how it will happen. There's a New Madrid fault line that goes right up the middle of the United States along the Mississippi River. And that's, that's an earthquake fault line. And unlike California, it hasn't had the burps to release some of the energy and so forth. And, and I've spoken to people who are involved in preparing for that. These are people with the USGS. Uh, they're people with FEMA and so forth. And they say it will be a 9.5 or higher It'll go up the Mississippi into the Great Lakes, out into the ocean, and flush it back. And literally, and you can pull up if you go to uh, New Madrid Fault Line on, on Google, and then you go to Images, and you pull, go on down. There's even a map that the Navy put out about how it will totally and completely divide the United States. Something that powerful is going to affect everybody all across the whole United States. And so we need to pray that... This nation doesn't help to divide Israel. And this isn't a political statement. This is the word of God. It's what God's word says. And so people, even contact your congressman, whatever you have to do to help to stop that. And I believe that you know, we have, as a church, really come together in this time period. And so that shows just how powerful the church can be. And I believe that God's heart is 
for the sudden suddenly is to happen for many you've been waiting a long time for those prophetic words to be fulfilled and that god wants to do that that there'll be kairos moments in time that will require your kairos responses that means just like when there's a cloud filled sky and it opens up a little bit the sun shines through as quickly as it does that it closes up so you got to be ready to jump into those kairos opportunities god gives you as opportunities knock open the door and and welcome them and that financial wealth is even going to be restored to the kingdom in this time for kingdom purposes and then god said this and when he did like see i'm a former secretary i was a secretary for 25 years for other ministries before god opened up the door for me in my ministry i never expected to be in my own ministry i was like what <laughs> me no um but so being a secretary a lot of times he speaks to me in words and word pictures and that kind of thing so anyway all of a sudden uh, one of the things that he said to me as i was sitting before him and asking him about this year he says tell my people to dream and then it, then he said big and when he said big big became a big word like this and it was like poof big tell my people to dream big tell my people to do big and it was like fireworks going off and um so in this year it will be a year of defining moments fulfilled promises and dreams and prophecies and and those things that you have waited a lifetime to do and he gave me the verse in psalm 65:11 where it says of him he crowns the year with his goodness and his paths drip with abundance listen we're called as as his people to take dominion to operate in spiritual authority he said greater things than even jesus did well we do and we can intervene in situations by the power of the name and blood of jesus and we've got to use the power that God gave to us. Don't just lay down and be a doormat to the de devil. Don't just accept junk that goes on, but go forward and and come against it by the power of the name and blood of Jesus. And you know, I was listening uh, to Lance Wall now. I just love to listen to Lance Wall now. I believe this is his time to shine, so to speak, in the kingdom. And one of the things he said was, all high impact and super successful people believe that their intentionality is to be in control of situations that's not something new agey that's the word of god because he tells us that we can do all things through christ who strengthens us and that we have uh, greater power in the blood and name of jesus and so we want to be a high impact church don't we we want to accomplish things for the kingdom and God doesn't give authority to excuse makers, <laughs> okay? No, I just don't feel like it. I, I don't want to go to church. Oh, I don't feel like lifting my hands during worship. Oh, you know, that makes me feel stupid. That makes me feel dumb. Uh, what's the difference? I'm just going to sit here. Well, sit there if you want to, but I'm going to tell you what. If you will, during worship, get involved, it'll, it'll help shake some stuff off of you that you've been needing to get rid of for a long time. The Lord told me years ago, worship is your warship. Okay? Worship is your warship. God inhabits the praises of his people. And if you will get involved in worship, it will set you free. It will set other people free. David was unashamed to even get out in the street and dance. And look what happened because his wife made fun of him. Uh, she was barren. She didn't get to have any children. But I believe that you know, one of the things the Lord says is, don't let life rule you. You rule your life. <laughs> you, you can do that. And again, it's not just, oh, the power of positive thinking. No, it's the power of a positive God. It's the power that he has put on the inside of us. We do not have to just accept whatever happens. We can be doers in the kingdom instead of just hearers. The Bible tells us, don't just be hearers, but to be doers. In James, it says, uh, you, you can talk about your faith if you want to, but I'll show you my faith by my works. One day the Lord spoke to me and I said, so God, you know, what do you want me to do? And he said, believe me. And I said, well, I do. <laughs> I mean, I'm in the ministry. <laughs> Don't you think that means I believe you? And he says, if you believe me, you'll do what I told you you could do. 
if you believe me, you'll get up off of your duff and do it. And so this is a year, like I said, the empire, <laughs> meaning God and his people strike back. And, and we're going to be the doers in the kingdom. We're going to be those who are victorious. It's a choice, you know, not everybody's going to do it. Oh, well, see you, wouldn't want to be you, love you, but there's someone else above you, you know. Um, I, I want to do what I'm called to do. And again, it's not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. So don't, don't take me wrong. And, you know, the blood of Jesus can't be bought and all those other kind of things. I know that. So don't think I'm saying something I'm not. Take it in balance and understand here. I, I get all that. But if you want to accomplish what God has told you you can accomplish, you've got to get up and do it. You've got to. And there is a special grace and a special, um, I don't know, just authority that I believe is in this time period to do that. And we have many prophetic signs all around us, like that old song, signs, signs, everywhere signs. <laughs> There's a lot of prophetic signs out there that tell us that. And so it's time to just do it. Okay? Amen? Amen. So did you want to? Um, and then um, I feel like I have some words for some people, but I saw you up, so I thought you were wanting to. Oh, okay. All right. Well, while you stand, I'll sit. Okay. We're going to take a love off. You know, well, while he's doing that, I just want to say this, too, because the Lord spoke this to me the other day while I was driving, and I literally had to pull off the road and, and write it down. But he said, this is the year that self-deprecation is out, and that that's not humility, that it's actually word cursing yourself, and it has nothing to do with being humble. But whenever you do that, you're agreeing with the enemy's lies, and he's the, the liar and the father of lies and the accuser of the brethren. And that true humility, um, as I heard one man say, is agreeing with God. When he says you can do something, to just do it, just like the disciples. They had fished all night long, but he said, cast your nets on the other side, and you'll bring in a big haul. And they're like, well, I already did that, but nevertheless, because you said it, well, I guess we'll try it. you know. And look, they brought in a big haul that even broke the nets. And so that it's time for us to agree with God and quit sabotaging ourselves by agreeing with the enemy's condemnation and by word cursing ourselves. Um, that those self-deprecating word curses halt God's split favor and blessings. And so to repent of that and instead speak his word and his favor and blessings over yourself by the power of the name of Jesus. And then take stock of your skills and abilities and even your experience because even in the areas where you've been wounded, as Rick Joyner says, once you're healed, you have authority to heal others. So even bad things you've been through, God says he'll work all things together for the good and that Satan's defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So don't let any of those things stop you. Again, if you let anything start stopping you, it'll never stop stopping you. Amen? So, Lord, I just thank you. For those that are here, and just ask you that you would give words right to the heart of what's on your heart for your people, and like that sharpened, polished arrow, and even those golden nuggets so that they'll know the words are truly for them. Amen. You know, um, 
ever since I came in, in the room, I just felt like that God said that he's going to do a new thing here in this congregation in this coming year. And just that all the promises that have come, whether it's from since Ron and Denise have been here or even before, but there's a culmination of all of those. And he gave me the scripture that your prayers have come up as a memorial before him. And that there's going to be like a good, like a God explosion here. And just to expect it. And that I just saw many of you, you know, going out and coming in and, and just bringing people with you even um, that would be healed and delivered and set free of things. And so I just encourage you, you know, there are people out there just waiting to be asked, <laughs> waiting to be invited somewhere and waiting to be loved on. And, and that's what God wants to do with this congregation. He has made a firm foundation here now. And now comes the growth that you've waited for it. And it's kind of like, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, you know. And almost gotten discouraged that it hasn't happened. But I believe that between now and spring, that that's, you're going to begin to see that occur. And it's like I heard you're going to spring forth in the spring. And, and it's God that's going to do it. But he uses people too, all right? So don't be afraid to ask the cashier at Walmart or your waitress or whatever and invite them to the services because, like I said, there's people out there just waiting for someone to love on them and to invite them to church. And it's going to take you doing that. You know, a lot of times people don't see the signs, and I know it's even hard for me, even though I'm in the ministry, it's hard for me when I move to a new place to choose some place to go to. And but, so I feel like that God is saying it's time, it's time to get out there and, and do the work of the ministry uh, that you're called to do, and then he'll do his part as well. Amen? And um, back in the back there, I'm sorry, I don't remember names, so th uh, you got your hand in your shirt like Napoleon. <laughs> Pardon me? Larry. Okay. Um, so, Larry, I felt like the Lord said, I, I, and don't take this wrong, I felt like he said, no more messing around. Um, and this was his word, and it was like he was just being a buddy to you saying that. He says, no more messing around, um, just do it. And that he's been speaking to your heart, and that he said, uh, stop wasting time. And again, this is not a slam on you at all, but he was just being real with you. And he said, just do what I've spoken to your heart to do and, and go for it. And that there is, like, I just saw a greater maturity coming on you in the next, within the next one to three years. And the things that the Lord has called you to do, because he's called you to lead. People follow you whether you want them to or not. Um, and, but God said it to lead in the right way and that the things that he's spoken to your heart, it's like, don't procrastinate, don't start something and then quit. Um, those were the things that he was showing me and about the no more messing around thing, but he, he loves you. Um, he said he gets a kick out of you. <laughs> he says you make him laugh sometimes in good ways, sometimes not, but <laughs> that you make him laugh <laughs> but he he called you his buddy so he said he said come on buddy no more messing around let's just do it <laughs> amen and the gentleman over here in the blue behind jesse yes what's your first name brandon okay have you been here before okay so lord i just thank you for brandon i just saw like um the light of the Lord shined down to you, and he said that he's focusing on the things in your life that you've cried out to him to focus on, and that there's going to be the change that you've cried out to him for. And But to be patient in some areas, uh, that there's like a proving ground that you're going through, and that 
and not to give up before, like, the fruit of that. Uh, but he said, the things that you have been waiting for are going to come forth. Just, again, just be patient and know that he's working on your behalf in this season. And, and this is what he said, double for your trouble. You know, sometimes we really get upset about waiting, but the Bible says through faith and patience we inherit the promises. And that, and there's another verse that says, in our patience we possess our souls. That literally uh, people sometimes can lose their soul by getting impatient and doing stupid things. But, boy, that patience thing, just don't ever pray for it because <laughs> you'll have to wait for it. <laughs> sure, wait a year or two. <laughs> Amen. And uh, there's a gentleman back there with glasses on his head. Pardon me? Okay, is that your wife with you? Nick, what are your first names? Uh, Jim and... Minda. Jim and Minda. Thank you, Lord, for Jim and Minda. I heard, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. And so just that some of the afflictions that you've gone through, uh, you know, God has brought you through. And he even is in the process still of some that you are going through now. And just to know that this is a God time for you as well. And that he's going to open doors for you that no one can close. But I heard, stick with it, and he's going to stick with you. And to hold on because the blessings are coming. I just see there's some blessings that, just like I was speaking about, that have been held up. Um, but God says those blessings are coming. And if you'll be, again, for you all, if you'll be patient and wait, uh, you're going to see the victory. And, again, even by spring, there's something about by spring um, that it's going to come forth. And so hold on. And he says he has not forgotten all of the things he's told you. And just to know that his word is true, that he's not a man that he should lie. Amen. So this couple that was behind me, you're a couple, right? What are your first names? Linda? Tim? Okay. <laughs> Linda and Tim. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Well, at least you weren't sarcastic. You didn't say, well, if you're prophetic, you'd know it. <laughs> Don't get any ideas. <laughs> so um, I just felt God's joy over you in this season. And I kept hearing the w words breakthrough. And just that it's a, a time period for you that's been long waited for. Uh, and that he said, he, you know, as he's been saying to others, just wait. He said, no more waiting. <laughs> and so go beat them up because they're, they're not waiting. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but just that it's your season. It's your time. And I felt like that the Lord was showing me a picture of you all even uh, going to Israel, that there was uh, something about a trip to Israel that would be uh, of value for you. And that he's opening up some opportunities to do some long-weighted desires of your heart. But also that he's opening up some business opportunities that are going to be very fruitful as well. Uh, and he said, it's time. It's time. Amen. <laughs> well. <laughs> It was a corporate thing. The two are one. Amen. And so back in the middle here, the lady that I'm looking at, what's your name? Yeah, Michelle. As soon as you said that, I heard the Beatles song, Michelle, my bell. <laughs> and just that uh, I felt God's heart for you as I was sitting here, and he said, uh, just to know that he hasn't forgotten the promises he's made to you, uh, that it's been a long season, um, even uh, a season, an actual literal season that you have gone through, uh, but the Lord says, hold yourself steady, 
and know that he's heard your heart's cries and that the answers are on their way. And uh, in the process of that, I just saw he's been doing a deep work in you, a, a deep work, and that there's like a greater level of faith uh, that has been being birthed on the inside of you, uh, a greater level of trust in the Lord, but also even in the body of Christ, that there's something about it that he had to work in you in that way because of some things you've been through before. And he said, you're in the right place at the right time. And again, hold on. You know, when I was um, talking about the young people, um, when I was giving the word earlier, I just felt like that the Lord just showed me, like he just elevated you all, just lifted you right up off the ground like this uh, in the spiritual realm. And he said, look, look. And he said that he is doing something uh, within the youth of this church in this season that is going to be seen and heard throughout the nation, that uh, you're going to be focused on for what he's doing, that it's not a small thing, that don't think because it's a small group that it's a small thing because it's not. You know, Azusa Street was a small church, but God said he's going to do great things through the youth of this church. And so to hang tight together and don't give up and don't let outside voices detour you because in this season, if you will just hold on, you're going to see God do some mighty things through you. That And, and I just saw you standing, as a, like I said, as a group um, above the rest. And not in some, you know, haughty way or anything else, but in the area of anointing and so forth. And that you will literally see the signs and wonders come forth. And he said, this is like... Um, a season to shine. I just kept kept hearing a season to shine. And so much so that you'll even be in a store and people will come up to you and say, uh, they like your makeup, girls, or something like that. And they'll think it's your makeup, but it's the shining of the Lord, the outshining. And, you know, Peter, the, it was. they say it was his shadow, but it really, that it, if it's properly interpreted, it was the outshining of the Lord on Peter that literally healed people as he walked by them. And so, you know, God is saying... Um, let him do that work and don't give up. You know, most of all, don't give up. Don't give up because I see that the enemy has been trying to bring depression um, on some of you and, and God says, don't, don't let him do that. Like I was saying about worship, worship is your worship. Uh, just begin to worship the Lord and say no to that depression. I mean, we can literally say no. Depression, no, I don't receive you. Um, Rejection, no, I don't receive you. You have to talk back. If you're going to talk back, talk back to the enemy, not your parents. <laughs> Amen. But it was so strange because I just, I, I saw it out of the corner of my eye. And I was like, what on earth is going on here? And he says, I'm bringing them up to the next level. And, you know, like I was saying about Bob Jones saying, let my ceiling be your floor um, I, there's just an anointing on your group you've been paying attention and he said he's going to restore through you even for your, your families and what they've had to go through amen Do I need to quit? Okay. I th you know what? I think I uh, I didn't change my, my watch. I was like, 8.30? I got another hour and 10 minutes. I didn't change my watch. from. <laughs> I was just over in Alabama. It was central time. I was like, wow, that's a long time. <laughs> I don't know if I got enough of those words after that. <laughs> Kelly, um, the Lord said that he has lit the fire again on the inside of you uh, for worship 
uh, as well as for intercession, that there is an increase coming in the levels of worship and intercession for you and not to let go. Um, just But there's been like a discouragement on you in, in that arena, but God said, uh, I, I was just even hearing that song about light the fire again. And the gentleman back there with the glasses? Yes. Richard? Okay. And who's with you? Okay, Richard and Lori. Thank you for Richard and Lori. Thank you, Lord. I heard mischievous Richard. <laughs> and God laughed. <laughs> he said, the joy of the Lord is truly your strength. Although sometimes it's your wife's pain. <laughs> but that God said that that truly is a gift for you, for you, to you, but also through you to other people. And uh, don't stop because he breaks uh, even a spirit of grief through the words that you speak. You know, through the joy that comes into you from him and through you from him to other people. And I felt like the Lord said that uh, for the two of you, for your whole family, um, that this is going to be a year of great joy for your family. There's going to be restoration um, going throughout the branches of your family. And he said he's changing some things up, even uh, with some that have kind of gone in a different direction. Uh, he said, but they're coming to the end of it. That it was, excuse me, like they had come like to a almost like a drop off, and they decided to turn around. Like he said to them, "Turn around, don't drown." <laughs> and so he said, "So, so don't give up." And then I, I was hearing an old Tammy Faye song, "Don't give up on the brink of your miracle." <laughs> Amen. But I mean, literally, they're not going to have a choice because he's taken them right to the edge of this cliff, and they're going to see that that's the result and they're going to turn around and there's going to be great restoration listen there's again there's even something about this spring folks because every time I'm saying something it's like I keep wanting to say to the people by spring by spring <laughs> you're going to see some of these things break forth by spring there's something just amazing God is doing uh, by spring for this group of people here Let's just wait on him for just a moment because I'm getting a couple things but not a full view. So if you'll just hold on. We've got another hour and five minutes according to Central Time. <laughs> so there's a, a lady on the end here in the tan and, yes, what's your name? Sally. Um, Sally. Oops, oops, whoa, whoa, that was loud. <laughs> Sally. <laughs> Us uh, says the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I scared myself. <laughs> uh, Sally, um, the Lord is, I was just hearing the verse that he's nigh unto you, that uh, he, he's like hovering over you. I saw his hands on your shoulders and that he's heard your crying. He's seen your tears. Uh, and I saw him even reach around and wipe them away. And he said, I've got your back. And just that I just sensed his love for you. It's not like any major booming word for you, although that was kind of a booming whatever. Uh, <laughs> but just that he just wants you to know that he's there. And you're not alone. And, and that he hears your heart's cries. And if he hears us, he answers. And um, sometimes you forget who you ministered over because you just like zone out, whatever. I'm like, wait a minute, I think I got a word for them, but maybe I already ministered to them. 
Okay, so uh, did I already uh, speak to this gentleman and lady right there with the lady with the blonde hair and the man next to you? No? No. Okay, what's, what's your names? Tim and what? Tim and Bonnie. Praise you, Lord. I just heard this, the bowls have been tipped. And to me, that speaks to the bowls of intercession, the prayers. The bowls have been tipped, and the answers are on their way. And I saw, like, this golden oil come out. And then I saw you both, like, reach in it, and you were doing your hands like this um, in, in the gold. And, and I saw you laying hands on people. I saw you laying hands on maps. Um, and just that God has heard your cries and that there is an anointing coming to you even to lay hands on others. And, Tim, there's something about work. Um, God says that he's moving uh, in the area of work, uh, that there are some changes afoot, and that he's heard your cries even in that area. And it's like more than restoration. He says, behold, I do a new thing. And it's going to be restoration uh, and repair, uh, but it's going to be even more than that, that it's, um, it's like he's bumped you up a level. He said, promotion comes from the Lord, and promotion comes to you this year. And there's, like, major financial breakthroughs coming for your family. Um, and God said, enough is enough. And this lady right here, what's your name? I met up with you a while ago, and you told me, but I forgot. Yeah. Christina. And is this your son? Okay, and Nash, Christina and Nash. So, Lord, I thank you for Christina and Nash. And I, I just heard for you, for you Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. And just that He's refilling you with hope this year, Romans fifteen thirteen as well. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I just saw him just um, putting his hand like in a bucket of what was hope and just putting it on into you. And he said he's restoring what was lost. Yeah. We've got an hour and one minute left. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm not trying to put something more on you than than what um, you can handle, but I just kept hearing the Lord say, it's time to teach that school, that there is an anointing on you uh, more than just the, for the church, uh, but I see you, whether it's at an, another place you're going to go to to teach as well as this. I'm not saying he's leaving, okay, so just calm down. <laughs> Uh, uh, but, you know, sometimes even pastors teach at colleges and things like that, but I saw it as a school of ministry and that peop you were handing out diplomas and just that God says he has that in you and and I heard him refer to you as a professor, and but it was twofold, like a professor, obviously, of the Lord, but a professor in a collegiate way as well. And he said it's time. And, you know, sometimes we can even do something like that on the Internet. So I don't know how it is he chooses to have you accomplish that, but just that, you know, he is, like, extending that scepter to you in that regard. Amen. So, Father, I just thank you for each and every one here. I thank you, Lord, that even those who weren't spoken to uh, received what they came for. Uh, because, God, you don't put anything in our hearts that you don't intend to do. You know, and I just want to say that uh, Psalm 37 says he gives us the desires of our heart. That doesn't just mean our little Santa Claus list. That means he puts those desires in our heart so that he can accomplish them. And just that it's real important for you to know. So, and for some reason, there's a couple, two, three of you in here that you're like uh, kind of knocking yourself for some heart desires that are there. But God says he put those heart desires in there and it's not a carrot like that he's holding in front of you. Um, that it's not going to be accomplished, but because he put that there, that it will be accomplished. 
and it's time. So, Father, we just thank you. I thank you for Marietta Vineyard. I thank you for Ron and Denise and Jesse and Linda. I thank you for all of those who are working hard in the kingdom here. And I just ask you, Lord, that you would continue to fill this place up with your presence, Lord, and your people and accomplish your will in and through them. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I had a short word while you come. Um, I had a short word that I forgot about uh, for the church. And I, I actually kind of hesitated to say it because it, it sounds like it's because I came. And I don't, I don't think it's, it, you could have invited any prophetic person here. But as soon as Ron gave me the invitation, the Lord said that because you all chose to start out your year by inviting the prophetic in, that there's going to be uh, like a heightening of the prophetic here. But also, that's like asking God for his, his word, okay? And, and I just sense that there was just like an amazing blessing for you having done that. And again, it doesn't, it's not because it's me, because you could have invited Bobby Connor, you could have invited anybody, but it had to do something with inviting the prophetic in, and, and I just saw that because of that, it was like a whooshing of the Holy Spirit coming down um, on you as a group, and I've got like Holy Ghost bumps and hair standing on end just telling you that, and so I know it's him, and he says, watch and see, watch and see. She wants it on the tape. Okay. All right. Let me hold this thing so I don't have it falling all over the place. Um, Joni doesn't know this, but as you know, you know, we've been going through this series on Sunday morning as we gather and about the things that are supposed to happen as the church gathers, the literal gathering of it. Do you know what the one is for Sunday? Prophecy. She didn't know this. I didn't know that. Invite. You know, I already had it laid out as we were doing it. And it just worked out. And then after I asked Joni on Sunday morning, 10 minutes before we started, and uh, I went, oh, my gosh, this, the prophetic is the next lesson for, for Sunday morning. So I firmly believe that was a word from the Lord because it's something that Denise and I prayed about before we ever took the position as pastors here. It's a, a, a foundation in the vineyard movement, okay? So get ready. All right, let's stand. Let's all stand. If you would, just close your eyes and put your hands out to receive, just for a second. Lord, as, a, as part of the body here, we receive, and I believe for the whole body, that, Lord, that you will do the work in 2017 in this place the way you want to do it. Not by our agendas but, Lord, by your kingdom purpose. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done in Marietta Vineyard as you willed it in heaven. And we also pray over Joni that this year will be her finest year, the beginning of even finer years to come. That the very purposes and the, and the very callings that you have on her life, that, Lord, that they will come to even a, a more, as she said, an explosiveness this year than ever before. And we thank you and we receive her each and every time she comes. And we've always said that she's part of this body. And we love her. We extend our love towards her. And we ask that you will continue to provide for her in miraculous ways because her life is a living miracle. And we bless you. And may we go in your peace and your very purpose. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. All right. Greet some people. Hug them some next.